My dear friends, we are beginning this Mass, the Solemnity of St. Peter and Paul, here at Walt Reed Hospital. Our opening hymn for this Mass is City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. With your spirit. My dear friends, gathered here on this beautiful Monday to celebrate God's love on the solemnity of St. Peter and Paul, I pray in this Mass for all of you and pray for your families and pray for the intentions that you bring here today. Pray for all those who are joining us from the hospital or around our country here or anywhere else in the world that God may hear you, that God may bless you, and that God may meet your needs. In today's Mass, we pray for an increase of faith. Also pray for those who are sick here at Walter Reed. Pray for those who are sick around the world from this virus. Pray and ask God's intervention for their healing. I also pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. on earth, and peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will not be the Lord. You will not the Lord. You will not the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginning of her of this religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had taken him into custody and put him in prison under the guard of four soldiers, four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was just being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door guards, the door guards kept watch on the prison. The angel of the Lord stood by him, and the light shined in his cell. 
He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing what was happening to the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the guard first, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the response is, the angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor man called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord rescued those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The angel of the Lord rescued those who fear him. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, a crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, not only me, but all those who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat, and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said the reply, <coughs> You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> My dear friends, I will make a few points for reflection today. The first is that the church is still an instrument of grace. The church remains an instrument of grace. 
the channel where blessings and favors are poured from heaven. And that's a channel we are not using and accessing very well at this time. See, Peter was in jail. Scripture did not tell us here that Peter prayed. The church gathered and prayed for Peter. Scripture tells us how while he was in custody, Said Peter, thus was being kept in prison. But prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. Prayer was being made to God on his behalf. See, our, our country and I have, indeed our world is going through a very, very perilous time. For many of us who are angry, and rightly so, disappointed, and rightly so. But anger and complaining is not prayer. That's the thing this gone to. That's not prayer. God doesn't hear complaints. He hears prayer. Yet yeah, God understands our anger. But until we are able and willing to do what the church is, a channel of grace for the world, for the healing of the world, we will not be able to do anything to help this world. And that's the power we have and the power we carry. That each time we gather here to honestly offer this for the healing of the world, it has power. It can accomplish what happened here in this first reading. When the church gathered in prayer, the scripture says fervently. Fervently means not just with intensity, but with real commitment. That's what the church did. And so I think the church needs to go back in prayer. While we do all the other things we do, we need to go back in prayer. And that brings me to the first point I have on my mind to make today about these two persons we celebrate, Peter and Paul. There are two moments in Peter's life that stand out to me as a priest. The first is from John's Gospel, the sixth chapter, where when Jesus had told the Jews that unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you would have no life in you. And the Jews were like, there is no way anyone can tolerate this language. And the Jews decided to leave. So Jesus turned to his disciples and said to them, do you also want to go? And Peter spoke up, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the message of eternal life. I have come to believe. That's one moment in Peter's life that stands out to me. It is the realization that Jesus has everything that anyone would ever need. And that our dependence, our total dependence on, on God is like any, nothing else you could ever compare or imagine. Peter recognizes that. And sometimes that's something we fail to recognize, our dependence on God. I wish our world could recognize that the reason why we're failing right now and unable to even fix one thing because we think we are the ones on the driver's seat. And until we recognize what Peter recognized, to whom shall we go to? You have the answer. Why? Because before you and I ever came to be, he fashioned everything and knows where everything is. And how to fix everything. And until we are able to recognize that. It doesn't work. The early church knew that. That's why when Peter was in jail. Sure they didn't go out demonstrating. On the streets. They went back to demonstrate to God. They went back and asked God. God we need you to, to do something right now. Yeah we can show a lot of anger on the streets. But until we go back and show God. That we depend on you. We need an answer from you. We know you have an answer for us. We will be in this place for a long time to come, unfortunately. The second thing that stands out to me in life of Peter is what we see here in this gospel reading today. Jesus looks at Peter as he is. With all the, with all the failings in Peter's life, 
with everything that Peter has done, with everything that Peter demonstrated he lacked, and yet Jesus still said to him, says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. So Jesus passes a vote of confidence on Peter, in spite of all his mistakes, and he's going to make a lot of them after that. Now, what does that say to you? What does that say to someone else that sometimes we pass over because we think they're never good enough? God created Peter. He knew Peter better than Peter knew himself. And knew what Peter was capable of. In the military, they tell us that when you are promoted, you're not promoted for what you have done. You're promoted for what you're capable of doing. So the potential they see in you, what you're capable of becoming, that you get promoted. If it's for what you have done, that's it, you're gone. That's what God sees. God doesn't see what you are right now. God sees what you're capable of being, capable of becoming. That's what God saw in Peter. He says, upon this church, this rock, this rock. So it's a very not well molded rock, not well, not well solid rock. But in spite of that, that good for nothing rock, you might say, God was going to build his church. Believe it or not, if you can offer yourself to God, God can build a church on you, can build anything on you. Because the one who created you knows what potentials he placed in you. Potentials that you may never have known about. He knows what you're capable of. If you can offer yourself, I believe that God can do anything and everything using you. And that brings me to Paul. Father and I were just talking this shortly ago. He says the thing that stands out to him in Paul's life is how this guy who was a monster, he might he might pass for a terrorist, killing all of God's people. How God still found him worthy to answer and have the name Apostle. And, and that says a lot to us, especially at this time. We, we are too pure to be tainted by the impure. We have made the church a place for nobody anymore because the church is too pure to have us sin sinners. If God's church was like this, Paul would never be its messenger. Never. If God's church was so pure, Paul would never be its messenger. And so God opens opens his heart and his doors to saints, sinners, ugly whatever alike to come into that family because the church is a home of saints and sinners not just saints it's a home of saints and sinners and I hope that's something that we get to recognize in our church today so maybe you are the saint God bless you maybe you are the sinner God bless you but this church is able to accommodate all of us. The body of Christ is scarred by sins, by sins and righteous deeds. All together. We are family in this place. And we must learn to tolerate each other and help each other be their best. That's what this church is about. That's what Barnabas did for Paul. When Barnabas recognized that no one was accepting Paul, he encouraged Paul. Thanks to Barnabas, Paul became the apostle that he is. And I hope you will be the instrument God is going to use to bring someone to be the best they can be. Those are the lessons that we can learn from these two outstanding apostles, Peter and Paul. For Peter, recognizing our dependence on God and then God saying to him, upon you, Peter, you're failing, you a good for nothing rock, I will place my hope and my trust. May God help us to 
to recognize what God is capable of doing with us if only we offer ourselves and recognize to him that we are all instruments in the hands of God. So as I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, his only Son of God. All of us, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, was men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in heaven and birth and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon the Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And he said at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for our Holy Father, the Pope, who now sits on the chair of St. Peter, that God may bless him with his spirit to lead and guide the church through these very perilous times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for bishops, pray for priests, pray for deacons, pray for leaders of other religions and denominations, that God may help us take responsibility for the job entrusted to us to lead God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel rejected or feel outside God's touch and God's grace, that the Spirit of God may reveal to them how valuable they are to the heart of Christ, that they may surrender to his lead and will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, especially those here at World to Read, that the grace of God and the grace for healing may be granted to them in full measure to meet their every health needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our country. We pray for the men and women who wear our nation's colors, especially those in harm's way at this time. Pray and ask that God may protect them and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your own needs and pray for the needs of your families. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. That through our blessed mother's intercession and those of St. Peter and Paul, God may hear and grant those intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary. Full of grace. The, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. women. Blessed is the Lord Jesus. Holy Mary, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You may sit. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for will and the good of all His holy church. Amen. May the prayer of the apostles reward, accompany the sacrificial gifts that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. We ask this. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Amen. with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter firmest in confessing the faith. Paul is outstanding preacher. Peter who established the early church from the remnants of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world they share one martyr's crown. And therefore with all the angels and saints we praise him as without end we are claimed. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. In giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis of Pope and Timothy Bugley, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Martina Regan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We remember all our deceased relatives and friends, those who have died recently, those for whom we have been asked to pray, and all victims of the coronavirus tragedy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, for with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the water our Lord gave us, our Father. Word of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, 
so that the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Now for communion, you will stay on your seats, all right? I'll bring you communion where you are. Okay? Just let me know you're going to receive communion. Lamb of God, you take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be gender under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul, my soul shall, shall be healed. May the Father and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant also, Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, stand on all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the rings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I would like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. And I pray that God may be with you and that God may bless and keep your family. If you forget everything I said today, remember that you are still in the light of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Amen. Yes, to the prayers of St. Peter and St. Paul, the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. We will sing the song, the summons. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you